All right, Rosilla and I spent half of our weekend researching NBA stars who either quit on their teams or something weird happened. And we don't want to call this the Quitter Hall of Fame because in some cases, the guys didn't quit. Like Carmelo Anthony, I think there's, now that the years passed, you think, oh, that guy, he forced his way out of Denver, blah, blah, blah. You go look at the game log and he's like averaging 30 a game to the bitter end. He had like 50, like a week before they traded him. Like he did not quit on the Nuggets. He just told them, you have to trade me because I'm going to leave at the end of the year, which I don't know is necessarily quitting. So we're going to call this the Saboteur Hall of Fame. And what's funny is Will Chamberlain, I mailed you a Sports Illustrated article about Will Chamberlain. This was in 1965, and it was two sabotages away from where he'd end up in the career sabotage standing. But Frank DeFord wrote the piece, and it was about how Wilt had just forced his way out of San Francisco, and they gave him away for nothing. But it was like, he tried to leave Kansas twice. He tried to leave Philly after his rookie year. He tried to leave the 76ers when they were moving. And now he's done it again. And this guy, Will Chamberlain. And meanwhile, they have no idea he's going to do it again in 1968 when he forces them to trade him the Lakers. Uh, so he's really kind of the poster boy for the Saboteur Hall of Fame. It's one of the many reasons I have Russell over Chamberlain until my dying breath. But uh, as you're doing the research, what were some of the stuff that jumped out for you? I'll just stay on the Wilt stuff because I don't know if it was the most recent Lakers book that I was reading where I was getting into his entire run in the 69 finals against the Celtics, where the Celtics weren't supposed to win an NBA championship that year. He had four points in game oh, two yeah. of the NBA finals, four points. And then there's the mysterious game seven where <laughs> Van Brendikoff doesn't put him back in the game. And it was like, imagine if right. this stuff was happening now. If one of, And again, Wilt's a little older at this stage of his career, but he still won a championship three years after this. Um, which is weird because he almost didn't finish that series against the Knicks, but they won in five games in 72. So, but you're right. Like he shit on Kareem and said that Kareem should have retired five years ago. And so then Kareem got a chance. He had a chapter in a book called Wilt Chumper Lane. <laughs> right. <laughs> where he fucking ethers Wilt. It was like, you quit on Kansas to go to the Globetrotters. You quit on the Sixers or you quit on the Warriors. You quit on the Sixers. And then you try to quit on the Lakers too. And it just... He absolutely eviscerates him where he was like, you weren't a leader, you were a quitter. And every time things got tough for you, you blamed everyone else except for yourself. So when I did all the research for my book, it was why I ended up doing a whole Russell Chamberlain chapter because I just couldn't believe the grenades that everybody, that Wilt was playing for and against. They're just throwing grenades at him. Like Rick Barry, Bill Bradley. It didn't make you like pick anybody. The uh, Bill Russell, John Havlicek. All right, so we were talking about on the basketball reference pages of these different guys where it has like all NBA teams, all-star, you know, all defense. It should just be like sabotages. Because Harden would have like 2020 and 2022. Wilt would have had a bunch of them. Um, so our criteria is basically somebody didn't like his situation and sabotaged it until he was able to change the situation. Now, some guys might have done that, but still played well. So I'm just going through some examples because there's a lot. <laughs> Jason Kidd on the 2007-8 Nets, who's had played with Vince for a few years, and that team was going nowhere. There's this whole thing where he skipped the Knicks game because he had a, a migraine. People were suspicious about that. He made kind of a trade request, and then all of a sudden was like, I want to be traded. But if you look at his stats, they were pretty. It wasn't like he he didn't do a Harden. He was still playing hard to the bitter end, but it made it clear like just trade me. His stats didn't suffer, so I can't I can't really put him in the sabotage Hall of Fame. He was just unhappy and wanted to be traded, and they traded him. Like, I, do you count that as a saboteur Hall of Fame candidacy or no? No, because we have better examples. There's yeah, just, yeah. Like when I went through, I'm, I'm kind of surprised we're even starting here because, um. Like that was not one of the first ones that jumped out of my mind. Like I probably could have come up with 30, but I don't yeah. know how, like, is that accurate? You know what I mean? Or how much do we even know at the time um, where I think the guy that you just named is the first ballot saboteur and Vince Carter. Vince Carter, who I wrote about at the time, who I was very mean to in my book, but I felt like I really took the Toronto thing personally. And I went to a Clipper game right near the end when I watched him do it in person. So his last year the, with the Raptors, he was 16, three and three, 41%. He stopped, re he stopped rebounding. Yeah. Stop going to the free throw line. 3.6 free throws. It was the worst rebounding numbers 
in the first 18 years of his career. Goes to the Nets. They're so desperate to trade him. They take Alonzo Mourning's bad contract back. It's it's the worst trade anyone's made for a superstar. People would have a heart attack if, if they anyone did anything like it now. They got nothing back. They were just, he was unhappy. They were desperate to get rid of him. Goes to the Nets, same season, 28, six and five, rest of the way, 28 points a game, 46% field goal, almost seven free throw attempts. So he's the gold standard and he is in the Saboteur Hall of Fame, I think. It's gotta yeah. be in there. His, his PER would like, all in the 20s throughout his entire start of his career. And then that year with Toronto, 0405, he just says, nah, I'm over this. Get me and out of here. And I watched like, it. I went to a game. I watched him do it. 2015 Rondo will do quickly his whole Mavs thing, which would be the worst 30 for 30 ever. But he fights with Rick Carlisle the whole time. They play him only 10 minutes in game two of the first playoff series. He gets an eight second violation at one point because he's yelling at the coach. I can't remember if that was game one or game two. And then Dallas just sends him home. And then after the series, the Mavericks vote no playoff share for Rajon Rondo. Yeah, Pretty Rondo's good. got a couple because Rondo's first Lakers one was weird too when they all just wanted everyone to know fuck Luke Walton, right? Remember that? Right. And he sat down in the seats. Oh, yeah. Right. And then, and then Rondo in classic Rondo fashion. <laughs> Then got told us we were the jerks for yep. questioning it. <laughs> well, welcome to the Saboteur Hall of Fame, Rajan Rondo. Bob McAdoo, in er early, carrying carrying the torch early for the Saboteurs, 1981, really miserable playing for a bad Pistons team. Gets waived by them and paid off just to go away. The rarely seen, uh, this really didn't happen that much in the 1980s. Here's your entire contract, please go. Signs with the Nets as a free agent, never really gets in shape, and then ends up in the Lakers turning his career around the next year. But early, early saboteur. Um, T-Mac we have to put in there, right? For his the way his Rockets thing ended, that was pretty ugly. Yeah, you're going to have to refresh me on that one. Came back from surgery. He had knee surgery. Wanted more minutes. Rick Adelman didn't think he looked good enough. Didn't want to play him more minutes. T-Mac takes a leave of absence. They end up trading him. But the, the funny thing is the Knicks need to get rid of Jordan Hill and somebody else to create cap space for LeBron down the road. So they give up two first-round picks to get T-Mac in the trade. And then T-Mac's basically done. So they trade for like T-Mac. He's like way past his prime T-Mac. Um but there was some sabotaging. You go back and read, like he's was really unhappy he wasn't playing. So I think he's in there. Lamar Odom in Dallas. We don't need to go over that, but it's um he had he had a lot of personal issues. I don't do, do personal issues count for the Saboteur Hall of Fame. It's a tough one. I think he, you know. Maybe we could push him to the next year's ballot. <laughs> I Lamar had a lot of stuff going on. He like did. A lot All right, of so stuff. we'll push so, him off. We're yeah. we're yeah. Kawhi Leonard in the 2017-18 Spurs. Absolutely. Played nine games. Was working out with his own doctors. Turned on the team. I never really heard the most perfect story of why that happened, but I don't see how he's not on here. They ended up having to trade him for DeMar DeRozan. So he's got to be on here. Yeah, and the weird thing about this, too, is like this is the last of the trades where you go, what did you get? Like if this trade had happened two years later, right. you know the Spurs would still have five first rounders, a couple swaps that are probably never going to happen. Yeah, this was the last well, like normal one for a guy forcing his way out. Where now you're still paying some ridiculous first round tax that you could. So when he played, he played nine games for him, and then he came back, and he only played sixty for Toronto. God, that was he's twenty six, twenty seven years old, and you know apparently it's this condition that he's going to have forever. Well, it was uh, also a contract year. There's a lot of buzz that he was going to LA. So right. I think team, that's why the Celtics were afraid to trade. I think he's on there. Would you put Kyrie on there for his last Celtics season? Only because we know more about the behind the scenes stuff where he was. Uh, his Milwaukee series, there's yeah. YouTube clips. You can go watch them. I think he belongs. Yeah, I mean, the difference there is he just left as a free agent after saying, like, I don't care that he lied and said, you know, hey, if you'll have me back. I think mean, that doesn't bother me. I mean, guys don't tell the truth when they're trying to worry about their next move and all that stuff. I think that was more of sabotaging. There had been so many hints that this guy wasn't into it, 
and people would try to tell you you were wrong all the time. Yeah. Like, no, no, he didn't show up to the Cleveland thing because he he had had this weird dental surgery and he was embarrassed. It deviated septum. Yeah. And you were just yeah. like, what? Like it's game <laughs> seven against the Cavs. He Doesn't want to be in the bench. Yeah, he can't. No, he's been busy. You know, like the mass pike that time of day, too. It's just like Sturrow <laughs> <laughs> gets congested yeah. right around four. Sturrow, you know, they they could do some construction <laughs> in that Brighton Alston exit. He tried uh, to take some back roads to come and didn't wear a come av. <laughs> So well, his last four games in, a in the track. playoffs that year, he was he was 19 points a game in the playoffs that year, 30 percent field goal. The Celtics lost the last four games against the Bucks by 21, 7, 12, and 25, and he was doing weird shit. And some of it's on YouTube. The the switching to demanding to guard Giannis was iconic. I will never understand what happened to him in that series, <laughs> but I think we have to include him. Dwight Howard is a special. Uh, entry to the Saboteur Hall of Fame because he does the trade request in December of his last Magic season, 2011. I know Steve Cerruti's on on hand, probably sobbing tears right now listening to this. He demands to go to either New Jersey, LA, or Dallas. Then we get to the trade deadline, which was in March that year because the season started late. And remember the internet was really mean to Dwight. And Dwight decided, no, yeah, no, yeah. I'm, no, 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 I no, know no, no forget say. it. And I, and he waved his ability to opt no, out that summer. Yeah, he, he picked up his own option to stay he another year. Picked up year. his own option. He's like, no, no, not only no, that one. I got traded. That. I picked it. I picked up my option. I'm coming back. And the Magic fans are like, what? And then that summer, he's like, no, actually, trade me. And they end up trading him. And they somehow made out the best in that trade. It was a trade that had Andrew Bynum and Andrea Godala, all these guys. And Orlando got the best guys in it. Uh, Flawless, so he's right? on there. He's, his stats never suffered in the 2011-12 season, though. So I don't know. That's a special with the Saboteur Hall of Fame. When the stats don't suffer, I never know what to do. But he was so... You remember he had that weird press conference with Stan Van Gundy when it came out that he wanted Stan Van Gundy fired, and then they had to stand next to each other, and all of that was weird. Yeah, the, the metrics for that, the only thing you could argue is that you know, some of some of the stuff start falling off, but they still were pretty big numbers. Yeah, it's, and they're marginally falling it's like off. Fourteen I mean, rebounds a game that year. Yeah, he was leading the league in rebounding. I mean, his efficiency numbers are all going to be through the roof because he's around the hoop and he's rebounding like crazy. His defensive numbers, depending on what you want to buy into metric wise, there's no like valley where you go. Oh, you know, like the Vince Carter one again to go back to it. When I was looking at it this weekend, it's the best I was, one. I was laughing hysterically. I'm like, he stopped shooting. Stop scoring, <laughs> stop getting to the free throw line, and just his lowest <laughs> rebound per game number up until he turned 38 years old. And this was at what, when Vince was 27 or 28? And no, he was, like, he was younger. Yeah, he was probably like 25. He's like, I'm just not going to rebound anymore. And so you see it. And then as soon as he's on the nets, he's back to like scoring major. And he's like, yeah, he looks like boards. Kobe again. Yeah. So uh, Dwight does not like, we haven't got to Baron Davis's last year with the Hornets yet. Yeah, let's do that now. 2005 Baron Davis. <laughs> clashed with Byron Scott. Missed 12 games with a heel injury during this season. Um, just decided, did the I'm going to rehab at home thing so nobody knew where he was. Came back um, his last 12 games with New Orleans. He was 18 and 7, 34% shooting. Got traded to the Warriors in a trade that was not good for the Hornets. And immediately turned into a 20 and eight guy, 40% shooting. I, there's a lot of reasons. I think he was unhappy in new Orleans and I'm sure he, you know, he is a podcast. I would love to hear him talk about it someday, but he wanted the hell out of new Orleans to the point that they had to trade him for 35 cents in the dollar. And it was a great trade for golden state. I think he belongs on the list. Yeah. He, he shut it down. I mean, he played 18 games that year for new Orleans and then you were like, okay, so how did how did this work? Because I went through and, and did the game logs this morning. And you're like, okay, so he played in November, and then he didn't dress for a couple games, and then he played most of December. Yeah. And then once January into February, he just didn't dress or didn't play or wasn't with the team. So like all there's like three different classifications for why he didn't play. And I think at that point he was kind of like, you know, I'm sure there was some kind of injury there. But there was no real hurry to come back. And then the way it shows in the game log, once he was with Golden State, I don't think he missed a game. <laughs> like, played 29 straight with him and was really good again. 
And he did say, too, he was on TNT when all the Anthony Davis Pelicans Lakers stuff was going on. And Davis said to Shaq, he's like, look, I'd rather live in L.A. and have a $120 million than live in New Orleans and have $240 million. So I think that gives us a good sense of where his head was at with not wanting to stay in New Orleans. He gets on here again, but I can't. I can't crush him on this one with the Clippers. He signs with the Clippers thinking Elton Brand's going to be there. Elton Brand basically backstabs him and goes to Philly. So he ends up in the Clippers. First year he tries. I was going to the games because I had season tickets. I wrote about it a bunch. Second year, I think it was second year, showed up. He's 20 pounds overweight and on cruise control and was really on cruise control until Blake showed up. But I think he was really disenchanted by the situation. But it sucks because when Baron Davis is right, he's probably one of my yeah. favorite players the last 20 years because he was so powerful and so dynamic and he did have a little you know that that fuck you in your game that i love to see uh when he was right he was he was a lot of fun man i think out of the guys who you're just like man i wish we could do that career over again he's way up there for me c webb kenny anderson there's a bunch of guys like that brandon hunter uh kevin love 2021 multiple bizarre examples during games that were everyone was just like, wow, this guy really wants to get traded, including that one where he just passed the ball to the other team. I think he apologized multiple times, but just didn't want to be there. I think he's done an incredible job rehabbing uh, his image with that stuff and assimilating in a really good Cavs playoff team. He's been an awesome teammate this year. He was a terrible, terrible uh Big money guy for them last year. And I think he deserves to be in the Saboteur Hall of Fame. Okay, but can you be on it if you don't get your way? Oh, interesting. No, it's fair. I, I think I think what you're saying is like, wait, there's no stipulation that you have to be able to I, say you, know you what? moved on. I, I think the Saboteur Hall of Fame should include the people who didn't get their way. Okay. He tried. They looked him in the eye. Uh, a couple other people who tried. Sean Kemp. Heading coming out into the 1999 lock. So 1997, Sean Kemp gets to be in the Saboteur Hall of Fame because he's so mad that they overpaid Jim McElvain. He's so miserable that they end up having to trade him to Cleveland before the 97 season starts. That wasn't a full fledged during the season tanking it, but just he was, it was him and GP. And he basically was like, you got to get me out of here. So we could debate at the end of this, whether he belongs. But then 1999, he gained 35 pounds during the lockout. You can go read the stories. He was supposed to show up at like 280 and he showed up at 315. Um, I don't know if that's a saboteur thing. I know he had some other issues going on. I just wanted to mention it. Same thing for Spencer Hayward, uh, where, and you'll find out more about it when you watch this winning time show on HBO. But Spencer Hayward, his drug problem got so bad, he fell asleep during calisthenics during the finals and they kicked him off the team. Here's one who does belong. And this is one he made history. Uh, and one of my favorite role players, Robert Horry, 1997. Hated playing for Danny Ainge so much, whipped a towel in his face at a Celtic game that I was attending. And they eventually had to trade him with Joe Klein for Cedric Sabalos and Ramil Robinson. And he ends up on the Lakers. So there you go. Um, Adrian Dantley forced his way out of Utah. We mentioned Carmelo. I thought Pau Gasol maybe, but I looked up the game logs. He was great in his last Memphis year, which made me even matter that the Lakers traded for him. Anthony Davis does not count. His team sent him home because they were tanking. I think he would have played. Uh, Jimmy Butler. I Really? I, Davis doesn't count at all, though? All right, let's talk it out. Leaves the arena with his agent. Pick him up in like the middle of stuff. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the team Del- did send Demps, Demps ended up getting. They canned. sent him home though. They they because they were trying to tank. I don't know. Yeah, I but like from what I had heard, people were furious about it. Behind All right, the scenes. We'll throw him in. Listen, we don't have a limit on the Hall of Fame. Jimmy Butler, Minnesota has to be in there. That's one of the most efficient saboteur jobs you've ever seen. I mean, he wasn't even there that long, and then he showed up to a practice. Rachel sure Nichols was, was there with the camera right. crew and we're, and I'll we never, were off. I'll, I'll never forget that too. It was so obvious what happened. It was like, I'm going to go ape shit at this practice. I'm going to have people see it. And then I'm going to sit down with Rachel and make my case. And I'm like, this is all way too convenient. And I still think it was fucking lame that Will Bond like thought I was, he was like, Rosillo just, they, they brought it up at some interview in Chicago. And I like Will Bond, but he was like, oh, Rachel would never do that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's a fucking TV show. It's exactly what they yeah. did. 
And it's not Rachel's fault that Jimmy played it perfectly, she but it was all part. Of, yeah, it was all part of the plan. Like nobody was wrong necessarily, other than Jimmy was like, "I'm going to do all these things." It was very obvious what he was doing, and it worked for him. We asked House for some examples from the Wizards' bullets history, and he really didn't have enough evidence for Chris Webber, other than just Chris Webber, whatever was going on with him in Washington. But I, I, I rejected it. He was really pushing hard for Hot Plate Williams. I don't think Hot Plate Williams is good enough to be in the Sabertar Hall of Fame, so I'm, <laughs> I'm disallowing that one. The nickname's good enough. Andrew Bynum's in, though, because of what happened in Cleveland when he kept shooting after the coach called the team over, and he just kept shooting shots and wouldn't listen, and they kicked him out, and they kicked him off, and they eventually traded him to Chicago because Chicago was trying to save money. But he actually like sabotaged a practice to get him out, so he, he gets to be in. Congrats, Bynum. Yeah, Bynum wasn't real locked in towards the end. Um, yeah, you know, no, I would. <laughs> do you know how I, old I Bynum agree. is today? Is he like 36? He's 34. Oh my God. He played 400 games. Wow. He was really, when he wanted to be, he could get baskets. I mean, he um, was basically done, Bill, at 24 years old. Yeah, his knees. He was one of those when was, you, yeah, right. you see the guy in person and you're watching them run, and you're like, oh, this isn't going to be a long career. Is it like just legs and arms going? He works ways. out at the gym I go to sometimes. I haven't seen him there in a while, but uh, everybody says he's really nice. Did some so, research on 1970 Oscar Robertson in Cincinnati. Suspicious 12-game hammy pull at one point. It wasn't getting along with Bob Cousy, but I, he was Oscar Robertson, one of the 12 best players we've ever had. Uh, his stats were still good that year. He got the trade to Milwaukee in the off year. I'm disallowing that one. Same for Kareem. He told the Bucks, I'm going to leave in a year. Not sabotaging. I'm leaving in a year. You should trade me now. They did. They traded him the Lakers. And then Bill Walton used free agency to leave Portland, so he can't be included. Same for Moses in 1982. 1992, Barkley, even though he had some off the field, he always gave a shit in Philly, not putting him on. And then uh, the only other one was Andrew uh, Andre Miller in the Clippers. He hated being in the Clippers so much. His set, go look at his basketball reference. It is just an, it's just a mail in. But I think you, he hated the Clippers. I don't even know if that's a saboteur or not. He was just so miserable. Didn't you write a piece? I did. Is, this is years ago, right? And there was some thing that they was we asked, asked to a, do. We were doing a Jimmy right. Come Alive thing, and he, he was like, "Man, I ain't doing shit for the Clippers." He walked away. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, "Cool." Uh, so anyway. Here's our uh, our final Saboteur Hall of Fame. Will Chamberlain, Vince Russell, uh, Vince Russell, Vince Carter, Rajon Rondo, Bob McAdoo, James Harden, a two-time winner. Rarely two seen. It's Wilt and James Harden stand alone in the Saboteur Hall of Fame. Kevin I, would Love. Love, I would love for a Harden documentary, like one of these hagiography. I would just be like, so you were one of the rare, like you were able to do it twice two, in 13 months. Two times saboteur. And he just answers it like serious. He's like, hey, when I have, when I'm focused, when I have my, like when I'm, my heart is set out for something, like I just, I got to get it done. I, like I'm a closer. He's like, you say your hammy hurts. I mean, how do they know? Say you have a hand injury. How are they going to know? All right. So we have him. We have uh, Kevin Love, Baron Davis, Robert Horry, T-Mac, Dwight Howard, Jason Cade, you're saying yes. I mean, he trade requested, but he was playing hard. I'm going to say no. Because I'm going to say no on Jason I don't remember Kidd. it being nearly as ugly as like seven or yeah. eight of these other guys that we've mentioned. Lamar Rodham had issues, so we're saying no. Kyrie? Yeah. But that was a little different because he did leave as a straight free agent. But it was... Yeah, it was like passive-aggressive sabotage. I'm, I'm putting him in. He deserves to be in. Kawhi, yes. Uh, Jimmy Butler, yes. Andrew Bynum, Yes. And then uh, the last Biden one I forgot about. He just keeps <laughs> Scotty Pippen, no, because I love Scott Air. He, he was one of my favorites. Fuck that. We're not putting him in the saboteur I'll fan for not getting the foot surgery or ankle surgery until after the season started. Last but not least, and then we're going to go Zion Williamson, yes or no? All right. So it feels like it's heading in that direction now. Um, but I've, I've been told a couple different things here. One, the weight thing is actually a little exaggerated. And, you know, speaking of, we were talking about, like, can he's apparently one of those guys who can cut down pretty quickly. Um, it's hard for us to go full-blown, you know, who is this guy I think he is type of thing when the reports are all over the place. Like, clearly, he could do a better job of relaying the communication with his team. CJ McCollum saying that yeah. stuff on TNT during All-Star break, that wasn't an accident. He clearly was doing that on purpose to try to either get to Zion or be like, look, you need to be 
more mature about this. You need to be more accountable. I think that's part of the problem with it. But I still feel like people think because he's going to want this rookie max extension that this can be salvageable and there's still another version of him playing again with the Pelicans. I'm not saying it's going to be awesome. I'm not saying it's going to solve everybody's problems. I'm not going to say that at some point down the road he's not going to ask for that trade because that's kind of what guys do now is they get the full max and then they ask to transfer essentially. But when someone says he'll never play in another Pelicans, he'll never play in a Pelicans uniform again, I don't know that I'm, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't sign off on that yet. I said that three days ago. Oh, okay. No, I'm, you might be right. It just feels like it's done. When they put didn't put him in the season ticket thing, I don't I don't know how you unwind that at that point. Oh, okay. So you I you're assume, saying no way he doesn't he doesn't play for him again. I just I have no inside intel. It just feels to me five decades of experience watching this league we love feels like it's a wrap. Feels like they trade him this summer. I unless would, I would probably want to trade him, to be honest with you. And me the, too. the other thing that sucks for the Pelicans. You realize this is a 500 team since that disastrous I start. Know. And if they had Zion with CJ, who's good? Like, CJ's good. Brandon Ingram's good. Herb Jones Ingram has been really better good for him. Jonas. Jonas, Jonas is a good player. You know, there's still a couple younger guys that are only, you know, one or two years into their also, careers. Also, they can get in the play-in. They could get a 10 seed pretty easily. Yeah, so, I mean, it kind of sucks because I actually think this front office has done a better job than people would ever realize. Like, if you actually yeah. looked at it and go, oh, you know what they've done? And Willie's a good coach. You know, I think they've they've upgraded a lot of stuff with how they've, you know, there was a pretty cheap organization for a long time. And I, I think they've done a better job with uh, some of the expenditures and making sure people are taken care of that work behind the scenes. But um, I, I'd love to see it, you know, that that city. And, you know, I love that place down there. I'd, I'd love for them to be able to figure out a way to get Zion to play with this group and see what it looks like. But um, I, I would be scared of giving them a max, too, considering how bad the season has gone. The NBA Saboteur Hall of Fame, our scouts will be monitoring the Zion situation. But for now, those are our inductees. 